This is example number six for section 18.5. So we have here a block that is connected to two gears or cylinders, right? Those are, the two cylinders are attached to each other, so we can say that they rotate and displace in the same angular displacement and the same angular velocity. And meanwhile, though they displace, we have a velocity of block, let's call it this block A. a. So this is block A. So uh, we are being asked to find the velocity of the block after it has descended five feet. And it was released from rest and the spring was unstretched when it was released. So we here have a problem relating uh, forces which are weight and the force of spring, both forces are conservative. We do not have any non-conservative force here because we don't have any friction and then and the forces, there are the reactions of our, for example, our pin in O, they are, they are internal reactions, they do not produce any work. So we have only conservative forces here. We have to relate those conservative forces with displacement and velocity. So the better approach when we have to relate forces, displacements, and velocity is to use the principle of work and energy. So that's what I'm going to be using. And the principle of work and energy, I like to write it as the work done by non-conservative forces is the total energy of the second position minus the total energy in the first position being kinetic potential energy in the second position, kinetic and potential energy. But we just said that we have no non-conservative forces. That So we, have, we actually have here that the total energy in position two is equals to the total energy in position one. So this is conservation. of energy. Okay, so we will use this conservation of energy, so let's analyze the first position. Position one, we see that since it started from rest, T, e, T or kinetic energy is zero because it start from rest. And second, the potential energy. So we have two forces, two, two elements that uh, accumulate potential energy, and that's the spring and the weight, that mass that we have right here. So, and they tell us that the, uh, when it started, when it was released, the spring is unstretched. So we can say that the potential energy will be the, the potential energy done by the spring and the potential energy done by the gravity of that weight. They are telling us that the spring is unstretched, so we can say that this is zero. And about the potential energy done by the gravity, we can put a, our datum right here in the position one, so we can say that this is zero as well. So the potential energy in the first position is equal to zero. So actually, we notice that the total energy in the first position is equal to zero. For the position two, We need to find the potential energy and the kinetic energy. Let's find the potential energy, which is, as I said, done by the spring and done by the gravity. So, for well, the gravity is very easy because we are being asked to calculate the, um, the velocity when it has descended five feet. So our distance the, that we lost energy is a uh, is five feet. So we can write here that that's one half the constant of the spring times the whatever has a change or stretch the spring minus because we are losing a, a potential energy, right? Um, the weight times that height. So and the weight is not and the height is not. So what we have to find is the stretch of the spring. To do that, we will relate 
those uh, displacement of the uh, the gear. So it, we can do it like that. So let's write slice of that those two cylinders. And here we let me call that S1 and S2. And this is delta theta, right? So what I have what I have covered when I go down five feet. So here we know that the theta that I have changed, delta theta, will be equal to that radius, which in this case is 0 0.375, and that's S1. But I can say also that S theta is, this is 0 0.375, and this long one is 0 0.75, right? 0 0.75 equals S2. So if we solve for theta, we can say that S1 over 0 0.3075 will be equals to S2, 0 0.75. Since we know that I call S1 what the small one there, uh, uh, rotated, right? So S2 is actually 5 feet. So I can say this is 5 over 0 0.75. So finally, S1 will be equals to 0 0.375 times 5 over 0 0.75. So S1 is equal uh, to 2.5 feet. So we, will, we come back here. And actually, we will need that uh, relation also for the velocity. So because we have that. Um, this velocity, and we need the angular velocity. Well, we will do that when we get to the kinetic energy. But in any case, we now can calculate the potential energy will be then equals to 1 half k that is given 75. And we just calculated that 2.5 squared minus 250 times 5. Do I have this value? Uh, yes. V2 is equals to this value right here is 234.72. And this value right here is negative 250. All that in pounds feet. So we calculated already V2. So we have V2. Now we have to do kinetic energy. We are given the mass moment of inertia of our disk, which is this one right here. So we do have to take into consideration the distribution of the mass of the disk. We calculate the kinetic energy. And it will be, if I write it in the same way, it will be the kinetic energy of the disks plus the kinetic energy of the block. And as we know, we choose a point where to calculate that kinetic energy. So let's choose the kinetic energy for the kinetic energy of the disk. I will choose point O. That will be one half of the mass of the disk times velocity O. But that velocity is zero because that point is fixed. Plus one half the mass moment of inertia times the uh, angular velocity of those disks. And of course, I'm going to make that zero. So, and then we have, since the block is not rotated, the kinetic energy, only a linear value. So it will be 1 half the mass of the block, velocity of A squared. OK, so how much is my uh, mass moment of inertia if I'm given the radius of duration by the, the radius of duration? You know that is the square root of the inertia over the mass. So we can say that this is 1 half. Then we solve for the mass moment of inertia will give me the, the radius of duration square times mass. Uh, and the mass is given. Let me, oh, yes, the mass is right here. Let me write it, 50 pounds. OK. So we, ha we need that because uh, for the definition of the mass moment of inertia. So, so and then we have, this is velocity squared plus 1 half the mass 
Remember that in, uh, in American units, when we are given the weight, we have to divide by the gravity to get the mass. So that will be that the mass given times the velocity squared. So that will be then equals to. So now I can uh, relate. Very important, we have to have only one unknown, and the angular velocity is related to the linear velocity, because as we know, we can relate the, this point here, we can call it A prime, has the same linear velocity as, the way, as that block. So that will be omega times that radius is equals to V. So we can actually say that V A prime which is equals to VA, will be angular velocity in sensi radius, right? So I will use, since what I want to find is the velocity of the block, I will solve for VA and I will solve, and I will say that the angular velocity is the velocity over the, ra the biggest radius. Okay. Finally, let's substitute here my values. I have one half. Then I have the, uh, the radius of gyration is 0 0.5 square. My mass is 50 pounds over the gravity, right? Times that velocity that I just found, velocity over 0 0.75, all that square. So this is a bracket. And then plus my mass of the block, which is the weight over the gravity, times the velocity squared. So here I have one big expression, which only involves velocity of A. I'm going to put that as, I'm going to solve for all these numbers and put just one number right here, 4.22 velocity of A squared. OK, finally. I have also found then the kinetic energy. Go back to my initial color. So I said T2 plus V2 is equal to 0. Therefore, I can say that 4.22 VA squared plus 234.72 minus 152 is equal to 0. Therefore, velocity of A is equal to 15.5 feet over second. That's the magnitude. Of course, we already know that that magnitude goes downwards because we, are, we said that it descends 5 feet. So if you wanted to put it as a vector, it would be a negative vector in direction negative j.